Hi there, in today's video we are going to talk about the circle to land. You will understand what it is the circle to land, why we do have this procedure, when we use this procedure, and then we're going to jump into the whiteboard and we're going to make a practical example analyzing two different charts where we need to do a circle to land. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. <music> Hi there, I'm Gabriele from PilotClimb.com. I've been flying the Boeing 737 for more than 10 years and then I help you to become a better pilot. So consider subscribing to the channel if you don't want to miss the next content. Okay, so let's talk about the circle to land. Let me ask you a question first. What would you do? What are your options if you arrive at your destination and you notice that for the landing runway of your airport there is no approach procedure available? So there is no ILS, there is no INDP approach, no unknown precision approach, nothing, zero, there is nothing. There is only an approach available, an approach procedure available for the opposite run. What would you do? Well, the options are basically two. Either you do a visual approach or you perform a circle to land. All right? So in today's video, we are going to talk about the circle to land. So the circle to land approach, guys, is the visual phase of an instrument approach that allows you to position yourself for landing when you don't have any instrument approach procedure for a specific runway. Okay, so this is very uh, common on runways that I have C on one side or low terrain on one side and very high terrain on the other side. So when you have low terrain, it is easy to build up an instrument approach procedure, an ELS, a non-precision approach or whatever. But when you have a high terrain on the other side, it is very difficult because you cannot fly through the mountain with your aircraft. The benefits of flying a circle to land is that it allows you to position and land on a runway that has got no instrument approach procedures. In my career, I've flown many circle to land and the reason why we do fly circle to land is that to during landing you need headwind or you can take up to 10 knots tailwind, okay? And my question is, what happens if one day you've got more than 10 knots tailwind on the runway that has got the LS available, for example? In that case, you need to fly the circle to land. What do you do? You fly the ILS, you descend to the minimum descent altitude or minimum descent height of the circle to land, and then you break to the left or to the right, you get into the downwind, and then you establish and you position yourself for landing on the runway that has got no instrument approach procedure. So by doing this, you're gonna land with headwind, okay? There are mainly two types of circle to land. We've got the circle to land without prescribed tracks and the circle to land with prescribed tracks. The difference is basically very simple, is that the, the circle to land without the prescribed, uh, without, with no prescribed tract, you can basically do whatever you want as long as you stay within the protected area of the circle to land and above the minimum descent altitude or height and you keep the runway and the terrain around you in sight at all the times. But, however, on the uh, circle to land with prescribed track, you really need to follow prescribed track that are indicated on the Jepsen chart or the nav nah, on your approach chart, basically. But without further ado, let's jump right into the whiteboard. I'll explain you how can you fly a circle to land, what can you do if you have to do a go around, and then we're going to see the difference between a circle to land without prescribed track and a circle to land with prescribed track. Okay guys, as you can see, this is the PISA chart, the LS Zulu localized the Zulu for PISA. Okay, as you can see already, we've got, these are the runways, guys, okay, runway. And what we've got in here, we've got the terrain. Okay, so as you can see already, the problem is in there, because you cannot fly an LS through the mountains, okay? I think a few years ago, they now introduced an AirNav procedure that flies through the terrain in there. However, in the past, there was no a instrumental approach procedure for the runway 22 because this is runway 04 okay so if you land like that it's runway 04 and if you land on the reciprocal runway like that it's 22 all right so 99 percent of the time guys in pisa the wind blows in this direction okay so it is very good and easy to land on the out of the ls you just get established on the ls land on the ls with the headwind however from time to time we've got the tailwind so if you have more than 10 knots tailwind that's coming from the sea guys you need you cannot land from this run, you cannot land from run at 04. What you need to do, you need to land from run at 22 because you, you need the headwind, all right? So, how do you do that? So, first of all, you get established, okay, inbound the LS, and then you descend to the minimum descent altitude for the circle to land. Now, the question is, where do I get the information about the minimum descent altitude of the circle to land? If you look at the chart in here, you've got this box in there. 
Okay, this box actually tells you what are the uh, minimums and what are the instructions to fly the circle to land. All right, so let's read through them. We've got circle to land, not authorized west of runway. So we know already that west of the runway we cannot fly the circle to land. And if you are wondering where the, no, the west of the runway is, if you basically draw a line on top of the airport, we've got the east in here and the west in there. So in this area there, you cannot fly the circle to land on the west side. All right? Beautiful. So you can only fly it on the east side. Then it is, says maximum knots 100, 135, 175 or 175. What is this? This is the aircraft categories. Okay, depending on your aircraft category, you have a maximum speed that you need to keep when you are performing the sequel to land. Why we've got this maximum speed when performing the sequel to land is because you need to stay within the protected area. What is the protected area, guys? Every landing runway of the sequel to land, in this case, this one, okay, because this is the landing runway, okay, when you're landing like that. This landing runway has got a protected area. That is basically what it does. Make sure that you stay separated from the terrain. Okay, this protected area has got a radius. So you have to imagine a radius, okay, and then a circle. So every landing run where you've got this, uh, when you have a circle to land, has got a protected area that has got a radius. The longer the radius, the bigger will be the protected area. How big is this radio? Again, it depends on the aircraft category. If you look at the table on the left, depending on the aircraft category, guys, this radius about the protected area changes. So for category Charlie, which is normally the Boeing 737, the Airbus A320 and so on, we've got 4.2 nautical miles. So that means that this is 4.2 nautical miles. That means that this circle with a radius of 4.2 nautical miles is our protected area. Why it is important, the protected area, is because when you perform a sequel to land, you always must be and stay within the protected area. All right? Beautiful. So now, the maximum speed is 175. So when we actually fly the circle to land maneuver, our maximum speed that we need to maintain is 175 knots, even during the go around, okay? Until we actually get established on the uh, missile approach procedures, all right? So beautiful. Then what we've got in here, we've got MDA, minimum descent altitude or height is 870 feet. That means that we need to stay at at least 170 feet throughout our sequel to land procedure, okay? I'm sure you're wondering, okay, how, when do I actually get down and land? So once you arrived on the base and you have the runway inside, you, you, you must maintain the runway inside at all times during the sequel to land, but when you have the visual reference for landing and you are sure that you can perform a continued descent into land, is when you can actually leave the minimum descent altitude and start the descent for land, okay? Beautiful. Then we have got this number between bracket is just the uh, height, okay, the difference between altitude and height and the, is the airport elevation. And then you've got the visibility, the minimum visibility required to perform the sequel to land. Again, guys, it changes uh, depending and uh, depends uh, on the aircraft category. Okay, so as you can see in here, guys, this is the, uh, the EASA regulation table, okay, which says that depending on the aircraft category, the sequel to land should have a minimum decision height of 400 for category alpha, bravo, Charlie delta, depending on the category, it changes. A minimum visibility that changes depending on the category, a radius of the protected area that changes depending on the category, and a maximum speed that change depending on the aircraft category. These are the regulations. However, like as we said, as we saw in this example, the airport, depending on the uh, terrain, depending on the procedure, can actually reduce the maximum speed allowed during the sequel to land. Okay? Beautiful. Now, let's see practically how do we do that. So we get established on the LS, guys. We arrive in here, we get established on the LS. Okay, so we descend like that, all right? We arrive at the minimum descent altitude for the sequel to land, which in our case, let's say we are doing with the category Charlie Aircraft is 870 feet. So let's say we arrive here at the minimum descent altitude, okay? And what we do, we break to the right. So we break to the right. Then once we break to the right, we go on the downwind, okay? We cross the, tre the threshold, then we uh, leave the threshold. And then once we are at the, at the correct position, normally it's 45 degrees from the runway, we actually turn left and get established on the final approach, on the final for the landing runway, okay? 
Now we need to make sure that before breaking to the right or breaking to the left, before we actually leave our instrument approach, we need to make sure that we've got, first of all, the runway inside and the terrain inside of, uh, of the surrounding area. Okay, We need to make sure that we, uh, we think that we're going to be able to maintain this visual reference throughout the approach. And then the last one, we need to make sure that we are within the protected area. So once we have these three conditions, that we have the visual reference, we know we maintain the visual reference, and we are within the protected area, then we can actually start our sequel to range. The first thing that we need to understand is that the missile approach must be the one of the instrumental procedure. So if you've flown the LS, you should fly this missile approach in there. And that's why it is very important never go below the MDA if you don't have the, if you're not on base and you are sure you're gonna do a continued descent and you see the runway, okay? the landing threshold most, most, most more correctly, okay? So let's say now you arrive in here before actually starting SQL to land and you have to perform a go around. What do you do? Very easy, guys. Simply push toga and then do the go around as uh, per the uh, instrument approach procedures. Now let's say, let's see another case. You arrive in here, you break to the right, you go to the downwind, you arrive at the base turn in here, you start a right, a left turn, you start to descend and then in here you want to perform a go around. So what do you do? You need, first of all, to climb back to the minimum descent altitude. Okay, so you climb back straight, out, straight ahead, minimum descent altitude. Then you're going to turn left, climbing to the uh, missed approach altitude, okay, and get established inbound and fly the missed approach. Okay, so basically you fly, you go, you go straight ahead, minimum descent altitude, keep climbing, turning left, and then establish on the uh, missed approach procedure. Okay, if you have to do a go around uh, downwind, you fly an S turn, climbing S turn, get established on the missed approach, and then follow the missed approach. If you have to do a go around before actually joining the missed approach procedure, you should maintain a speed which is lower or maximum speed of the sequel to speed. So, what I mean by that is if you arrive on final, okay, and you press, press toga, you start a go around, you have to maintain maximum in this case 175 knots. When you are maneuvering with inside the sequel to land area, the protected area, you have to maintain the maximum uh, speed of the sequel to land. Okay, guys? So, beautiful. This is the example of a, pro of a procedure that doesn't have prescribed track. Let's have a look of a sequel to land, a visual maneuver that has got prescribed track. Okay, guys, this is another chart. This is the Ajaccio uh, airport, okay? So this is the airport, the runway, guys, okay? And the difference between the previous airports, okay, the Pisa, Sequel to Rain, this Sequel to Rain, is that this is a specific chart for the Sequel to Rain because in this case, we have visual maneuvering with prescribed tracks. So we have got prescribed tracks that we need to follow, depending on your aircraft categories, again, depending on the run renews and so on, all right? So if you look in here, okay, so this arrow, this black arrow is actually your prescribed track. So what, this is a visual maneuver, but you need to follow these tracks, okay? So you still need to be I overfly the 341 in the Sierra, leave the 341 on 098, 4,000 feet maximum until 5 nautical miles Alpha Charlie, which is this DME in here, okay? Then it's a left turn, 4,000 feet, 052 until the 3 nautical miles Alpha Charlie. Then it depends if your aircraft category Charlie Delta or Alpha Bravo, you need to fly 022, okay? And go all the way down to this point in here where basically we've got the distance of 4.6 so you need to fly this segment in here which is long 4.6 nautical miles okay so then you arrive in here you go on the right base and then you get established maximum 180 knots during the base okay so as you can see this is a difference sequel to end because we saw in the previous example you could basically do whatever you want as long as you you were staying within the protected area and above the minimum descent altitude okay but in this case, you cannot do what you want because look at it. We've got lots of terrain all around there, okay? So it is very important that you actually follow strictly this approach, this uh, route, okay? So you, look, we've got 4,000 feet minimum altitude in here, in here 3,000 there, 3,000 there. Then once we cross this point in there, we can actually go down to 2,030 feet, okay? Look, it's very funny because if you look at this point, is the point that basically allows you to go from 3,000 to 2,030 feet. But how can you actually recognize what is this point? Because there is no uh, via radial distances and so on. 
it's a coastline. Look at this. This is a coastline. So once you cross the coastline, you can actually go down from 3,000 to 2,030 feet and then get 2,030 feet at this point and right and get establishing bound. Okay. So from the point Charlie, which is the one that basically uh, uh, is your final approach uh, point, okay, where you get established starting descent, you have the 202, okay, you, you have to go down and then you've got the go around in case you don't, for any problem, at runway and join and follow 212 from Romeo Bravo locator climbing to 3000, then as a direct. So as you can see, guys, this is a simple terrain. However, you have a lot of instruction, what to do, where to fly, what are the track that you should follow, all right? So the minimum, guys, we've got category Charlie is 180 knots maximum. We've got 4,000 feet minimum descent altitude at the beginning, okay? But then we can descend in accordance with the procedures. And then we need a visibility 10 kilometers or more, okay? At night, this procedure is not authorized, okay? So guys, as you can see in here, we've got another type of sequel to land, all right? So the sequel to land is not a difficult maneuver. However, you should really take into consideration the terrain, the speed, and then if you have to do a go around, you need to make sure you know which is going to be your first turn, for example, okay? Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video about sequel to land. I hope you learn a little bit more about sequel to land, what it is, why we use it, and uh, how can you fly a missed approach out of a sequel to land, okay? So if you have any questions, leave a comment below, and then I will help you out. Also, go to Pilot Climb com where you can subscribe for free part of training content. I wish you a great day and I'll see you on the next one. Check. We can set to 70, please.